Hello, how are you doing? Um, hope you are well. Um, I'm on the kind of tail end of this horrible cold that's doing its rounds. So uh, hopefully I won't have any coughing fits, but I've got my juice, I've got my tissues, and hopefully we will be okay. And I hope you guys are okay as well. Um, so welcome, welcome to Make It Monthly. This month it is the turn of the scan and cut. So um, it's a relatively, well, I say relatively new, it's probably been um, with the Craft Store Direct for quite a while now when I think about it. But um, we've not really done many Make It Monthlies about it. I think the first one was just a very, very kind of broad overview. But with this particular one, we've got a project in mind because last time we did a Make It Monthly, you were saying that you like to learn a little bit with a project. Now, I've not got my um, kind of iPad close to hand. It's over at the demo desk. So I'll have a little look to see if there's any messages coming through in just a second. So if you're saying hello, apologies for not um, replying to you um, at the moment because I don't know till I have a little look. Talking of which, shall we head over there and have a little look at what we are going to be making? So let's go and have a little look. If you've got the right button, hopefully that will be it. There you go. So this is our project for um, this evening. Now, I know it's a little bit um, cutting it fine, shall I say, with regards to Easter, since tomorrow is Good Friday, but it's more about what you're going to learn in the process than the actual um, project it, um, purpose it, itself, should I say. Um, so that's, that's why it's one of those situations that uh, hopefully you'll learn a few little kind of hints and tips along the way that you'll be able to um, utilize in other areas. So, um, I think I have got messages coming up. Swipe left to re reveal messages. Let's have a quick look. And we'll see what happens in a minute. We'll swap it around. We'll swap the cameras around and then hopefully we'll be able to see what's going on. So, this is our little project. <coughs> so, the project itself is... Oh, I don't know my left from my right. That's the first thing that I've noticed. So, the, <laughs> the project that we've got is this little box, um, which neatly houses a little egg. But as I say, it's more about learning the basics of the actual onboard um, software, so to speak, really. So it's about learning to create shapes and how you go about doing that and, and kind of creating. Just happens that it fits an egg on this occasion, um, but it doesn't have to be, it could be whatever, you're making it for whatever project. It's we're going to learn about welding and flipping, rotating, things like that which are all kind of built in. Now I'm looking at my iPad and it looks like it's breaking up a little bit as um, we're streaming. So you will have to keep an eye on that and hopefully that's not something that we're gonna struggle with. So I'll uh, hopefully uh, be all right with that. But anyway, let me swap the uh, cameras around and then hopefully you'll be able to see what we are doing. And the camera will catch up with me in a few moments. So. I'm keeping an eye on the comments. I've got my phone to hand as well. I think it might be worth me bringing my phone out and just keeping an eye on that as well, um, which may be a little bit quicker. So let's bring that up then as well, just in case any questions come through. The Craft Store Direct. There we go. And it says we are live, which is good, because that means it's working. So, um, don't know if we've had any comments come through. I'll keep an eye on my phone. So, um, got the camera set up. Sorry, let's move Bunny, Bunny Rabbit out of the way a little bit. So, hopefully, um, we'll teach you a little bit, maybe. Maybe you're thinking about getting a scan and cut. Maybe you've already got one and not yet to get it out of the box, which happens. Um, and uh, hopefully, I'll be able to help you get a bit of confidence with it. So, first thing I'm going to do is going to turn the machine on. Oh, what I will mention as well. Um, at the end of um, the live, what I will do is um, figure out how, I'm not too sure, but the, all the information, the sizing and everything that I'm working with, I've done as a little PDF, so uh, it's quite, quite a basic one, but it's got the fundamentals on there, so you can kind of have this and maybe watch um, back at a later stage, because obviously you can go back and watch this if you want to, and you'll have all the information there. So I'll, I'll pop that on for you a little bit later on as well, and then uh, you can kind of take it from there if you want to have a little go yourself. So, did I turn it on? No, I didn't. So let's turn it on to start with. Um, and then uh, we should be able to see everything that's going on. Oh dear. Have I plugged it in? Didn't press hard enough. Whoops. Got too many different things going on at the same time here. 
There we go. I'm going to turn that, turn that off because I can hear myself otherwise. Right. There we go. can hear myself. Let's turn that down. Right. Okay. So, um, obviously, when the, the scanner um, starts up, you've got your, your screen. I'm working with the SDX 1200. Um, I don't know how this kind of piece, um, the, the kind of onboard computer, how that compares with the other um, kind of models. So, I'm hoping that what I do is kind of transferable onto the other the models. I don't know. So, um, if anybody's watching and, and there's anything that I'm doing and you think, oh, I've got a different machine, I can't do that, then by all means shout out and I will kind of let everybody know if I spot it. So, um, start off with, obviously you've got your little screen there and what this means is you've got everything that you need within that screen. So you don't have to go to a computer if you don't want to. You can, there's a, an area of software which is called Canvas Workspace. And Canvas Workspace is free to download and you kind of hook it up with your um, scan and cut machine and you can transfer wires wirelessly between the two so if you do like a software um, to design and there are additional bits and pieces that you can do within the software that you can't do on, on the machine because fundamentally software and a computer has got more capabilities than the onboard computer that you've got with your scan and cut so we've got the screen um, to start with and the home button is kind of where you find all the all the kind of uh, basics which is what you would expect home takes you back to the beginning. So when you first set up your machine, it will say that the, the carriage needs to kind of get itself into position. So just click on OK, kind of does a little wiggle um, just to get itself ready. And then you move on to the different kind of sections. Now, very, very briefly, I will just mention that you've got your patterns, as you can see here, and these are all your different menus of your different sections of your patterns, and we'll be using some of those in a few moments. You've also got the ability to scan because if you've got things that are pre-printed, then you can scan those, lay down an outline and cut them out that way. You've also got the roll feeder. So if you've invested in the roll feeder to do things like your vinyl, then you can use that and that's how you work with that. Um, and these are different things that you may well get set up as time goes on, collections you might buy and things like that. You've also got the ability to retrieve data. So if you've saved anything and you've saved it on your scan and cut, if you've saved it on the actual scan and cut itself, you would ret retrieve it by pressing that button. If it's on the USB stick, that button. If it's by a direct feed from your laptop, so you've got your USB cable going across, then that one. And then you've also got your Wi-Fi so you can connect it via Wi-Fi as well, but we're not doing any of those today. Um, you've also got things like your test cut, and you've also got your toolbox, which will give you the ability to do all sorts of different things, change it from metric to imperial, um, different things that you, you use more often than not. So if you're into, um, I don't know, cutting vinyl and you want to do a half cut, then you can set it up in this particular section and things like that. So we're going to go straight in with the pattern now and see a few people have joined us that might not have been a few moments ago. So this is what we are making um, and it's a little box with a bunny on it and an Easter egg. Now it's not about it being an Easter gift, it's about learning how to do the different elements. So taking shapes and changing them, welding them together, creating things as well. So that's what it's all about. So don't think, oh, I'm not into Easter, I'm not going to be watching. It's kind of a, a project, but it's about how you get to the end result, more so than the fact that you're making an Easter bunny. So hopefully, if you are watching, you'll stay tuned for that, or you watch on repeat. So, okay, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of the basic shapes. So under pattern, you've got a variety of different headings, and under here, you've got different designs. So you've got your basic shapes, you've got motifs, you've got word art, borders, quilting blocks, all sorts of different areas. And if you do go to the Brother website, you can actually download a PDF. Um, I've actually got it on my phone where it's got all the different um, sections and the different designs that are built in with their own unique numbers. Because when you actually um, select them, you'll notice that they have got a reference number. And I do refer to those in the PDF if you do decide to download that as well. So the first one, nice simple one, we're gonna go into, um, so let's go back, we're gonna go into patterns and we're going to go into your basic shapes. There's loads of different basic shapes here, but the one that we're looking for is your, um, uh, where are you, your oval, which is BA 
um, A066. So they're all in numerical order. So you just work your way down to 66. And there we go. You can see it's over there. So that's the one I'm going to use. So I'm going to click on there. And what you will find is you'll automatically get sizes of these, the kind of kind of factory settings, but you can change all of this with all of these different kind of uh, settings that you've got in here. So you can make them taller, wider, make it in proportion, make it out of proportion. It's entirely up to you. So we're going to change the height to start with. So at the moment it's set at 50 millimeters, so five centimeters, and we're going to change the height to 100. Now, at the moment, there's a little button to the side that you can see here with an upward arrow and a, a downward um, sideways arrow. Um, I don't think there's a glare on the screen. I'm just going to alter that and wait for the camera to catch up with me. Um, I don't think there's actually a glare. I think it's just the way that it's kind of transferring the information across. So just keep an eye on the screen for a few moments. So you've got this little kind of upward arrow and um, side to side arrow, vertical and horizontal. Now, if you click on that, what it will mean is that those will move out of proportion. So you don't have to have um, it resizing its, its same. So if you double in the height, it won't necessarily make the, um, the width in proportion. And that's what we want to do on this occasion because we want to change this, um, this particular one. So I'm going to change it to a height of 100. So I've put the press the button now and it's gone blue. I'm going to change the height to 100. And you can kind of hold it and it will go through at speed if you want and you can try and catch it <laughs> if you can but you've got your increments your individual increments which you can alter it with as well so you'll see you've kind of vaguely will see from the here that it's it's reshaping it and you can see that now because we've got everything in proportion it's actually turned it into a circle so we're going to make the width 40 so i'm going to take that down and all the time I'm doing that, it's kind of giving you a preview of where your shape's going. So if you haven't got specific dimensions and you just want to kind of get a look, keep an eye on that screen and then you'll be able to kind of say, oh, yeah, that's it. And then hit set. So happy with that. If you want to alter sizes in proportion, you can do so you can alter it by 25 percent or whatever figure it is you wanting to increase it or decrease it obviously within the perimeters of the cutting map and then numbers so if I wanted five of these then I could increase that number to five I will need two because they're bunny ears and we'll need two of those but at the moment I need to do a bit more playing around before I duplicate them so I'm going to click on set and that will take it into your work area and hopefully you'll be able to see on the mat um, where you have got that little oval that's um, appeared. So it's up in the te top left hand corner. Again, I'll keep an eye on the screen because when we're going onto a different screen, it might not look as clear as it is to me at the moment. So I'm just going to pause with this a little minute. Um, and we are going to actually rotate it in just a few moments because at the moment the design has come, well, actually, we don't need to because it's automatically righted itself. Um, when it's come in, it's kind of switched it around, which is fine. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to drop that back a little bit. Hopefully that you'll be able to see from there. So we've got our bunny ear. Um, and I'm going to create another one of those. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edit. So the option underneath is edit. And that's whenever you want to change any shape at all. And you'll see automatically there's a little red box that's appeared around the oval because it's been selected. So that red box means, oh, I'm selecting this piece to work with. So when you're wanting to do any work on anything, you need to make sure that that red box is around that particular shape. We'll talk about multiple shapes in just a few, a few minutes, but to start off with, we're just working with this oval here. So with the oval, we're going to duplicate it. So um, all I need to do is go OK, because I've selected what I want to work with. Just still keeping an eye on the screen there. Um, if there's any comments from anybody because you can't see or anything like that, just, just shout out. Um, so I can click on OK and it will give us, um, oh, hold on, no, go back in, select it, uh, edit it, object edit, I do apologise, object edit, that's what we're going to do because we're going to alter the object. Um, and you've got a few different headings around. So the different headings that you've got are for resizing um, and a lot of these are quite logical when you look at the icon that's there so the arrow making it look bigger then yeah it's resizing when you've got a plus and an extra one that's duplicating you've got one with an arrow so that's rotating um, some of these are kind of like mirror images 
This one on the left hand side, that's adding on a bit of uh, seam allowance. So if you're into your quilting and you want to add um, seam allowance on, you can do. Um, so there's quite a few different working with punch tools and stuff like that. So there's quite a few, or piercing tools, should I say, that um, are there. So we're going to duplicate it because we need two of those. So it'll ask me how many I need. And if you do increase the quantity to make it um, too much for your actual mat to cope with, it will tell you, you can't have that many. There's not enough room on this mat, but you can have however many. So say if I put 100 on there, it might say, oh, you can't have 100, but you can have 25 if you want, because they'll fit on. So you can do that. So this is the, the quantity that you need in total. So at the moment I've got one and I need to have two in total so that's why I increase it to two doesn't mean you're getting an extra two so it always counts that first one so when I click on okay I've got two ears now so these are my outer ears so I can put those side by side um, and uh, I'm going to make one of these into my inner ear I'm just keeping an eye on my instructions down here so the inner ear so this one that we've got to the right I'm going to make that one my inner ear 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 <laughs> And I'm going to resize it. So I'm going to go into that button that's got the double headed arrow on it. And that is for my resize. And this will take us back to that original that we saw earlier on um, when we selected the shape to start with. So again, the shape that I want has been selected. So I've got the, the red box around it. So I'm going to alter the size. Now this time I'm going to make it 75 um, high. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So again, decrease that number down to 75 oh gone a little bit too far there 75 okay um and the, well now i forgot to actually alter the out of proportion so it's automatically changed the width as well because the width originally was 40 but you can see it's changed it to 30 now um, and I, th I think 30 oh no it would, it would go smaller if i wanted to um some shapes it won't let you go too small i think it might lose some of the, the kind of detail so there are parameters that you can get, have to stay within so um, 75 centimeters high by 30 um, millimeters so 30 millimeters high not centimeters um, 75 millimeters high by 30 millimeters wide so that is my inner ear and you should just be able to see that we have actually got two shapes on there now so click on ok for that and that is my outer ear and my inner ear now when you've actually got it on the mat you can play around with these shapes so if you wanted to kind of do a little bit of an eyeball um, and uh, line them up to make sure that they're kind of looking the the shape that you wanting them to do you can do that you can kind of drag them around um, i tend to keep them up in the top corner out of the way if i'm not using them or not ready to use them um, and then I'll, I'll move them around later on when I get my cardstock ready to cut out as well. So um, again, if you have just joined us, I know I keep doing this, but people jump, jump in at all points. So this is what we're creating, this little box. And at the moment, we're concentrating on the ears and we're making it out of basic shapes. So once you've made this, if you make it out of basic shapes, you can actually um, make and sell these without any issue. There's no license that you have to worry about because it's your design. Right, so um, inner ear and outer ear. We've done that, um, so we're going to keep those. We need two each of those, but we'll leave them just one each for, for the time being. And we're going to look at um, his head. So the head, actually I just realised I held it up to the camera and you couldn't actually see, so there you go. It's on a bit of a, a delay. The uh, What I've got on my iPad. Just checking, any men comments? Oh, a few people watching. Right, so um, the head. So I'm going to go back to the basics. So click on OK. Now, if I pressed on home now, it would assume that I wanted to, to delete everything. So I'm going to click on base on OK because everything I've done uh, so far, I'm just acknowledging everything is OK. And then I'll get back to this screen that we've got here, which is our add or edit. So I'm either going to add something to the design or I'm going to edit what I've already got there. On this occasion, I'm going to add and I'm going to add another pattern. Um, and the pattern piece again is in the basic shapes. This time it is the circle and the circle on this occasion is BA for your basics and then it is A045 and I've just gone past it. So again numerical order, there it is. And on this occasion it's coming up as um, a hundred. Okay, need it to be a bit bigger than that but I need it to be in proportion because it's a circle. So if I knock out the proportions it will become an oval which we don't want. So just click on either of those two and take it to um, 150. So um, looking at 15 centimeters. So you can hold it and you can see 
it will increase on the screen as you go. Only needs to be roughly that. It doesn't have to be exactly that, but uh, since I've said 150, I might as well make it 150. Okay, so all done with that, set, okay. Click on there and all of a sudden our head appears in the cutting area as well. So now we've got kind of the components to make the outside of the head. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go back to the outer ear, which was the larger of the two ovals. Um, and I'm going to duplicate this one. So um, I'm kind of doing them individually. You could group the whole lot and duplicate them. So I could kind of select both of the ears and duplicate them at the same time, but doing them individually kind of lays down the, the kind of muscle memory. So that's why I'm doing it that way. So um, we've selected the shape. We've got the red box around it. We click on edit and now object edit. Um, this is where you would select everything if you wanted to kind of select everything you put them here You can either draw a box around the items that you want him to select or you can select everything as you can see there But we're not going to do that. So um, I'm going to just select that one on its own and click on OK So object edit what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it. So we did that before so it's exactly the same the little plus button I need two in total and then I'm going to click on OK. So now I've got my two bunny ears, the outer part of the bunny ear. So that's the part that's going to actually attach to the circle that we're making um, in a few moments. So I've got two of those. I'll need two of the inner ear as well, so I might as well do that at the same time. So again, press on the inner ear. Don't forget to use your, your, um, your stylus that comes in with your machine as well. Um, I'm going to duplicate that as well and then click on OK. So now I've got my two, I've got my head there and I've got my two inner ears and I've got my outer ears. So I'm just gonna do a little bit kind of maneuvering on the screen. So I'm gonna bring the head down and I'm gonna take the two um, outer ears. So I'm gonna take one, which will be the right ear, one, which is gonna be his left ear. And I'm just gonna move the inner, ear, inner, inner, ears, inner ears out of the way because I don't really need to do anything with those until I come to cut them. So I'm just gonna put them up in the, the corner out of the way. So, um, I'm going to position my ears, but I want them to be um, a little bit kind of angled. So you can see rather than being upright and straight, they're off a little bit to the side. So I'm going to alter the, um, the degrees, the rotation degrees. So I'm going to click on the left ear. And then this time I'm going to look at the rotate button. And this is the third one on the top shelf. And it's got the little arrow um, and uh, that kind of, it's almost like a universal sign for, for kind of rotating things. You regularly kind of see that sort of style, that, that icon. So I'm going to click on there and it's going to give us a few different options. So you can see there are a few presets for you. So you can automatically uh, um, move it 90 degrees if you're wanting to. Um, you can move it in increments of 10 degrees, either clockwise or anti-clockwise and then one degree as well. So you've got a lot of control with regards to this if you want in to as well. You've also got your undo button if you want to take it back to where it was and you've also got your degrees there as well. Now if you're thinking well actually I just want to flip it so like 180 that is actually on one of the other um, buttons that we saw earlier on. So this is kind of if you're not completely flipping it although you could press 90 degrees twice if you wanted to. So now on this occasion we're going to be using the 10 degree angle button um, and the left one I'm going to take it um, backwards by 10, um, 20 degrees so you press on 10 and you'll see that it makes it off a little bit and then press it again and it'll go off again and it'll actually give you the correct degrees that you've got there. So obviously 360 is your complete and it's, it's kind of taken, knocked the 10 off there so if you wanted to know the specific number, then you can do that. Um, and do it with the right ear as well. And this time we're going to take it in the opposite direction. And again, 20 degrees. So that they are there, like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ears and I'm going to drag them into position roughly where I want them to be on the head. And I need them to overlap because we're going to do something called welding in a few moments. And what that means is it makes it all into one shape. Now, um, you've got a variety of different kind of lining up tools that you can use if you want to. But on this occasion, because they're, they're not um, all lining up together, like centralizing the whole piece or whatever, it can be a bit tricky. But I will show you um, how you do that. So I'm going to go into OK. Um, and it is going to be in, I think it's this one, isn't it? No, it's not. Because that's the flip one. I've forgotten which one it is now. 
oh it's down at the bottom there because you need to select more than one item that's what it is so down at the bottom here you've got some of the buttons that we're going to be using in a few moments the weld one is in the one in the middle and the alignment one that i'm referring to is in the um, on the side but what i need to do is actually select two shapes in order to do that so um i need to do the uh selection so i can either select everything that's on the page or draw a box around things now you can see that the box is there already um, with the arrows on the corner so what I can do is just isolate the areas that I'm wanting to select okay and if I click on okay it'll it'll only take um, shapes that you've completely um, selected shall we say so whereas the circle it was only part of the circle it will just disregard that because it's a case of like well you haven't put the whole of the circle in so I'm assuming you don't want the whole of the circle so here you can see now we've got both of the ears selected so I'm going to click on okay um, and then uh, go into object to edit. Now, when I go into object to edit this time, because we've got multiple shapes selected, it will give me some additional tools to work with. So including the alignment one, which is the one that's on the right hand side at the bottom. So if I click on that one, it will give me lots and lots of different options here. So you've got align to the left, align to the right. You've got um, a line at the top, a line at the bottom. So basically it's bringing everything up together or everything down together. You can centralize items if you're wanting to, or you can centralize them horizontally as well. So if you've got them up here and you want to centralize them horizontally, it will bring them like so. So that's the one that I'm going to go for. I'm going to make sure that they're both lined up. So as I've got one ear above the other, although that looked quite cute. So I'm going to use this one here, which will allow them to line up together and they're not far off, to be honest, just a little tiny kind of wiggle um, and it set them straight there. So I'm happy with those. There was a little plus. I don't know whether you can actually see there's a little tiny plus sign inside of those. So if you're working along on the PDF that's available, then um, you'll be able to see that when you're actually working with it. So, uh, yeah, it's there. So I'm happy with that. They're in position. Um, I don't think I need them any further down than that. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. If I did want to move them, because they're both selected, I think I can move them. Oh, no, I can't move them at the same time on this screen. I'd have to go back to um, Object Edit, I think it is, with that one. And then, and then I think you can start. There you go. You can move them around there. So if I wanted them to come down a little bit further, then I can do, which I might do, like so. Okay. So the next button that we're going to look at is this one here. Um, Bit of a strange one it's like a circle with a, a triangle sticking out from it um, and that is your weld now your weld will um, literally put pieces together um, but they have to overlap so you have two pieces that are overlapped and then when you weld it it will take the outermost edge so anything on the inside um, it isn't kind of considered I don't think actually I'll, I'll double check on that one but basically it's the outside edge it's creating a new shape so I'm going to go into weld. Now, at the moment, I've only got the ears selected. So I don't think it's going to do anything if I try and weld them. There you go. That will tell me. The patterns cannot be welded. There are some patterns which cannot um, accept or there are no overlaps. So it might be built to a pattern that you can't overlap. Or on this occasion, it's because my ears are apart. They're not overlapping, so it won't let me weld them. So that's okay. Um, and it reminds me then that I need to incorporate the circle because the circle being the head, um, I'll need that. So um, I'm just going to click on um, OK. Um, oops, clicked on the wrong one. There we go. OK. And I'm going to go, um, I need to select. So again, we're going to click on that select there and they can either drag a box around everything or um, I can select everything that's on there. So I'm going to dra drag the box and I'm just going to pull in the corners again to make sure that everything that I want to be welded together is in that selection window, which you can see there. And if I'm happy with that, then I click on OK. And now you can see you've got individual boxes around the different pieces because they're all individual pieces. They just happen to be kind of laying over each other to create that shape. So if I'm happy with that, um, I'm going to carry on to the back to the object edit because that's what I want to do. I want to edit those objects and I'm going to use that weld button now, which is the one that's in the middle. And then that will mean that I've got that outer parameter so it'll process it. So there you go. You can see how little ears appeared on the, the, the bunny rabbit's head. So if you weld the pattern, you can't unweld it. So at this point, it's sometimes a good idea to duplicate the pieces 
So as if you need to go back and do anything else, you've got those as the originals. Um, I'm not going to on this occasion um, because obviously we're making this little bunny rabbit and I've done it before so I know that, that we're going to be okay. So if you are watching, this is what we are creating, this little bunny rabbit out of the shapes. No computer, so if you're completely new to the scan and cut, everything that you need is built in um, on that little screen. So happy with that, so I'm going to click OK. And now you'll see that we haven't got individual boxes around the pieces, we've just got that um, big um, big square around it all. Now, is that, yeah, it's a bit difficult to see it because it's the, the nature of the screen, but hopefully you can see it okay. Is that better? Um, I, it's your feedback really as to whether that's better laying flat or whether it, it was better um, previously angled, so let me know um, either way. I'll keep an eye open. So um, at this stage, we've got our inner ears now as well. So if I wanted to, I could position those and kind of have a little look to see how they look. But I know they're the right size, so I'm not too concerned about those. I know that they're going to fit because, of course, I've already done it and it's all in the instructions. So move the head of the bunny out of the way. and We'll come back to that one in a little while. And what we're going to work with now is we're going to work with the eyes. Now, if I bring our little bunny rabbit in, you'll see that you've got kind of two parts to the eyes. You've got the white area, which is made up of a couple of circles that have been welded together. And then you've got the inner part, which are the, uh, the black pupils. Yes, no, or is it the iris that's the middle bit? No, it's the pupils because they go bigger and smaller, don't they? So the black pupils are made out of circles and then the, um, the white area has been made out of circles as well. So um, we're going to go back and get circles. So um, from the screen that we're on at the moment, we're going to click OK because at the moment everything's all right. And we're going to keep pressing OK till we come back to the option of adding or editing. OK, so we're going to add a shape to our work area. So we're going to add a circle. So again, we're going to go back into patterns. We're going to go into circles and we're going to find um, the AA045 again, which is there. Again, factory settings put it at 100 millimetres, 10 centimetres. We don't need it to be that big. We need it to be 30 millimetres or th um, 3 centimetres. So again, Everything's in proportion, so make sure that you haven't pressed that little kind of up and uh, um, two way arrows um, button there. And we're just going to make that come down to 30. OK, now it will go beyond there, but on this occasion we need it to go to 30. So just increase it. Ooh, it moves very quickly. <laughs> OK, there we go. 30. Excuse me, I'm just going to have a quick set. Hmm. So. We need two. So at this stage, we might as well put in that we need two. So where you've got the number, we're going to increase it to two and click on set. So there you go. You can see up in the top corner there, it's popped the little eyes in. So I'm going to bring those both in. So we'll work in this area down at the bottom here. Bring in that other little circle as well. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to overlap them. now. When you're working on the mat, sometimes it's a little bit tricky to see. It's a bit glary, isn't it? There's not a lot I can do about that, I don't think, with the, the way that the, um, the light is, unfortunately. But hopefully, if you're working along, you'll, you'll have your, your worksheet, so you'll see. So we need to have these overlapping. Um, so what I'm going to do is weld them together they need to overlap but it's a little bit tricky to see them at this stage but that's okay because we can kind of sort that out in a moment so i'm going to go into edit um object to edit but we need to select both of those so again you go into whichever way you want to select them i'm going to draw a box around them again and then just select those shapes by dragging that around so it will forget about everything else that's in the work area we're just going to work with those shapes so click on okay and you can see that it's highlighted them both um, are you happy with that? Everything okay? Yep, it is. So now we're going to object edit. So first of all, we need to make sure that they're level at the bottom. So we're going to use that lining up tool again. So we're going to line them up and we'll line them up at the bottom in the horizontal. It doesn't really matter as long as they're lined up. So we'll line them up so as they are um, lined up like so and we're okay with that. Now we need to, to move these and we need to um, get them closer together. 
So what we're going to do is um, click on OK and we've got your little magnifying glass. So still got them both selected so I'm going to click on the magnifying glass and it will take us to 200 degrees now. So basically, if sorry, if you click on what I like I've done there, it will select the shapes. But what we're actually going to do is um, I need to kind of move down the screen. So if I this is where I'm kind of getting me to grips with it. There you go. So these little arrows that you've got at the top here, that will move your piece around if it's selected, as you can see on this occasion. Um, I have nudged it around a little bit, but you can see I can zoom in here now I can actually select these I think from this screen which I can um, but I need to nudge one over to the other I don't want to select both at the same time because it it wouldn't nudge them together that one's got to move closer to the other so you only need one um, so I know that they're lined up at the bottom so I'm just going to use the directional arrows that you've got here and just over move one so as it overlaps and you can literally nudge it the tiniest of amounts so as it overlaps until you kind of get get that look that you want of the eyes overlapping. If you wanted to go a little bit closer, then you can. You can actually go up to 400 degrees. And again, you just need to kind of move your mat using this upwards and downwards button. You need to go left to right. You've got the buttons at the bottom there. And you can see then how far they have overlapped. And if you're happy with that, then brilliant. We just click on OK. So this is where the two circles now are going to overlap to make those eyes. So click on OK. Um, and we've got them overlapped on the mat, as you can see. Now we're going to object, um, sorry, edit the object. So we've got to overlap them, weld them together. So we're going to do the selection thing again. So we're going to select the shapes that we want. So again, draw your box around them like so. OK, and then click on OK. And then it's selected everything that we want. So we're happy with that. Click on OK again. Um, and we're going to edit the objects that we've selected. And again, we're going to world. So again, it's doing that process. It's giving me a little preview. Again, I can go in and zoom in to make sure I'm happy with that if I want to. Um, and then if I am happy, then I'm just going to click OK. And it will make those two circles then. Um, it has joined them together. So they go, OK, so they are all selected. Now I need the inner eye as well. Um, so I'm going to go back to the main and select the circle again. What I should have done in the originally was make three circles and I would have had a spare one, but I don't know how many I put down. I've probably put three in the instructions, actually. I can't remember. But anyway, <laughs> you need three in total. Uh, you actually need four, don't you, because of making it the inner and the outside. So it's the inner eye now, it's the uh, the pupil. So now we're going to resize this to 20 um, millimetres. So again, I'm not going to knock it out of proportion. I'm going to keep that um, is it white rather than highlighted blue. And I'm going to take that down to, oops, don't want two millimetres. It's very small. I'm going to take it to 20. Oops, so down to 20 degrees, not degrees, 20 millimetres. Um, and I need two of those because it's going to be the the, uh, the pupils and then click um, select. So there they are in my cutting mat. So all my kind of components, my little kit is taking shape. I've got all my little components here. So at the moment I'm just kind of gathering them up out of the area that I'm working and I'll come back to them in a little while when we start kind of playing around with the card and putting the card in place. So what comes next? The nose. So I'm going to make that nose. Now the nose is really easy because it's actually a little triangular shape. There is actually a bunny head in here, which you could use, but because of kind of copyright issues, um, I don't know whether you're allowed to make and sell use, using those. Um, I don't know the, the inner detail. So if you're making it from basic shapes and it's your design, then you're okay to make and sell. So that's why we're doing this because that's a good habit to get into. Right, so the nose. We're going to add a shape and it's a basic shape. Um, and this time it is actually um, a BA and it's 036. So we're going to look down again, go past the circle. Oh, not well, actually, not past the circle, just before we get to the circle. So BA36. You've got all sorts of different kind of little triangles that you could use for noses if you want to, but I kind of liked that one. So that's that one. Um, and we're going to resize it. Um, so the resizing on this one 
which I've written down as two millimeters, which I don't think will be right. I've got a feeling it's 20 millimeters. Oh no, that's the whiskers. Sorry, the nose is 20 by 22. So um, the height is 20, I've jumped ahead. <laughs> the height is 20. Oops. We get that up to 20. There we go. Um, and it's automatically in proportion, so I haven't got to alter the, the other. Um, that's the way it just happens to be, which is good. So I don't know if anybody's making any comments. I just, I don't think there have been. Doesn't look as if there's been any comments made. I do apologise. I will go back and have a little look on this um, afterwards. But as far as I can see, nothing's been mentioned. So. If there are any questions, I'll have a look at them a bit later on. OK, so that's the, the little triangle nose. So we only need one of those and so click on OK for that. And I've got my little triangle nose up in the top. So that's all done. Easy as that. Whiskers. Now, the whiskers um, are actually all one piece. So these, because they're quite thin, they're only two millimetre wide, they'd be quite tricky to actually glue together. So I thought it'd be nice to make them all in one piece. So you've got your six whiskers and almost like a little connective part. So this is how we, we do this. And it kind of automatically made that interconnection when we play around with them. So back to the work area um, and we need a rectangle this time. So uh, we're gonna go into patterns, basic shapes again. Um, and we're going to use, I mean, you could use the square if you wanted to, that it's there. Um, I think the rectangle I use though is number 22. Um, as long as it's kind of got square edges, it doesn't really matter. So that's that one. And we're going to resize it. So we're going to take it out of proportion this time. Um, so again, we're going to press the little two-way arrows because we want to knock out the proportions. And we're going to make the height two mil and then the width is 150. So it's making a long slender rectangle, a whisker, a pair of whiskers. So 150. Okay, so we're going to actually need three of those. Um, and then because we kind of halve it, we'll end up with all six. So I'm going to make three in total and click on set and it'll bring them into the work area. Now, what it will do is you probably, I don't know whether you can see it or not. It's, it's difficult to see it. It wasn't glaring earlier on, so I'm not quite sure why it's, it's doing it now, but <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. So we've got our whiskers, but the whiskers aren't all together. They're kind of dotted around on the map because what it will automatically do is put them into an area on your mat um, to maximize your cut. So, um, or should I say, not maximise your, maximise your usage of your paper. So i.e. using the least amount that it needs. But at this moment, we're not worrying about that. So I'm going to bring the, um, the whiskers in. So I'm going to bring that whisker down here into the bottom left hand corner so we can work with it. And I'm going to bring the other whisker down and the last one, just simply by tapping on them and moving them down. Obviously, when they turn red, they've been selected and that's when you can actually move them. That one doesn't want to move for some reason. There we go, got it. Oh, it's been a tricky little one, that one, for some reason. Why do you not want to be selected? Actually, what I might do then is, okay, if you don't want to be selected that way, whoops. Ooh, I'll go into edit instead. Oh, it selected it now for some reason. Not sure. Anyway, um, so let's draw a box around it instead because that's easier. So just draw the box around the three whiskers that we've got. Don't worry about it overlapping with the bunny because it's only a partial overlap so it won't bring that into um, the, the pieces it's working with then just click on OK. So now I've got all three selected. So what I'm going to do is um, I need to line them all up. So in fact I'm going to go back because I do need them um, a little bit closer than that in order to to do it so let me just oops um, if I press on this one these arrows when you press on them they kind of select each piece in the order that you place them down on your mat so what you can do is kind of select items that way and then you should be able to drag them into the work area as you need them for some reason I don't know why it's not letting me oh there you go it's done it now 
very bizarre. Perhaps it's to do with the um, the pressure that I'm pressing on the screen. I don't know, but not to worry. So I kind of got them quite close together now, but I am going to select them all because I do need them all to kind of line up properly. So we can draw that box around it like so. Okay, and I've got what I've want selected, so it's okay. So now we're going to um, object edit and we're going to line them up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to line them up so as they all line up on the left hand side. So all the edges of those whiskers are going to touch. So that's fine. And that will automatically, because the pieces, the rectangles are all the same length, they'll automatically line up on the right hand side as well. Um, and then what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to rotate a couple of them. So the one at the top, we're going to select that one by itself. So at the moment we're okay with that. So I'm going to go back to object edit and I'm just going to collect, select, um, we'll select the bottom one to start with. So I'm going to rotate this whisker. So we're going to go into the rotate button. I've got it selected, go into rotate and we're going to rotate it just by 10 degrees. So um, it, can, it can either be the um, 10 degrees negative or, or positive, whichever way you want to do it because the other one will do in the opposite direction. So we're going to do that one as the minus. And then if I select the top one, we'll do that one as the plus. Okay, so you've now got one whisker going that way, one whisker going that way, and one being horizontal. So what we're actually going to do is going to get them all to overlap now, or all to align centrally, because that way they'll all line up all six of the whiskers, if that makes sense. So let's go back into object edit. So that's what I want to do with that object edit. Um, select the pieces that we're going to, um, oops, wrong button. Press the um, selection tool. So there we go, select all of those. So it's just the, the whiskers that we're going to select. I'm going to click on OK. Um, and I've got everything selected, so I'm happy with that. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to edit the object. And what I need to do is actually, um, have I got them all? Oh, there we go, got more selected. So I'm gonna line them all up now. So I'm gonna line them up centrally, vertically to make sure, well, they should all already be there, but the horizontal one will line them all up. So if you can see, keep an eye on there because when I line them up centrally, they will overlap. So now, I've kind of got the six whiskers with the connecting bit in the middle, if that makes sense. Hopefully that does make sense. Whether you can see it or not, I don't know, <laughs> but anyway. So that's okay. So now I've got that piece, so that is ready to cut as well. So you can see in the bottom corner now, I've got my whiskers. So now I've got all of those pieces to make my um, rabbit, oh, see it, hold on. I didn't weld them together. So um, let's go back to object edit and I'll pull that back down again. There we go, into position. So um, I need to object edit. So I'm going to select everything that I want to um, weld together. So bring that down and bring that down. Okay, so I've selected everything. Um, and then the weld button will be um, available to us when we go into object edit this time. So there you go, you can see that's highlighted. Click on there, and again, it will process, it will say you sure you wanna weld these together, because if you do weld them together, there's no taking them apart, and that is okay, so yep, yeah, that's fine. So we've now got all of our pieces to create our little bunny rabbit. So we can cut out those pieces, um, which we'll do now. So I'm gonna get my mat, and if I just swap over to, um, that one, for Daisy, knocking the uh, the camera. Um, I've got my mat. It's um, a new mat as well, so it's probably quite sticky. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay down, oh, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna lay down the pieces that I need to cut out all my different pieces for the rabbit. So I've got my brown card. So I'm gonna lay that down like so. Is there a texture on it? I don't think there is. So I'm gonna position that on there. Okay, so I've got that over there. In fact, let me just change. 
that's the one I wanted I think yes you should be able to see more there so so I've got my black cardstock for my bunny rabbit not black brown I've got my um what have I got bunny ears inside of bunny ears so I've got that card I'm not going to need that much to be honest so I've got my inside for my bunny ears okay I've also got the pink for the nose so I can put that over there so I'm just kind of filling up the mat with the same sort of weight that I've got of cards for the different pieces so put that there the whites of the eyes so I'm going to put that there like so and then I've got the black for the whiskers in fact I might move things around oops it's quite tacky that so pop that on there I think the whiskers to give me plenty of room for the whiskers oops yeah don't press on the uh <laughs> the screen as you're doing it so i've got my white there for the eyes and then i've got the pink for the nose so i'm just going to press this down over here where i've got a flatter surface um it's always a good idea to actually keep your plastic sheet that you've got as well because if you put your plastic sheet on top you can kind of press everything down so sorry i'm doing that off camera but there's not enough room there and what I also oops, sorry very no noisy what I also do is I keep um, oops, sorry close to hand a little roll of tape so this is kind of like your low tack tape so if you find that you your um, cardstock moves around because you, your mat isn't as tacky as it was then uh, that will kind of keep it in place so now we've got the cardstock on here um, I'm all good to go so I've got my design I'm going to say okay okay um, and I'm not too worried about where they're positioned at the moment and if you can see it or not um, not too worried about where they're positioned because I'm going to move them around in a few minutes anyway so click on okay and then it's select what are you going to do are you going to cut or draw where well, we're going to cut okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load my mat so you line it up and you line, press the button to get your mat in place and it will feed that in like so. Okay. So what we need to do next is, um, oh, hold on. Scan. <laughs> I was just thinking for a minute. I had to think what I'd done wrong. So. Once you've got all your pieces ready, we're going to scan the mat. So um, I fed the mat in, um, click on that one. And as you can see there, it'll tell you to scan the mat um, and show it as background. So let me, let me just take the mat out again and we'll go back to where we were. Um, so we've got everything there, I was happy with that. I clicked on OK, ready to cut. But before you do that, you need to scan your mat in. So um, scan by feeding that in a little bit. Okay, and then when we click on scan, what will happen is, is the mat will feed in. This is where you're going to make sure all your cardstock is down good and proper. Um, scan the mat, um, and that will show us your background then. So press on start. So what will happen now is we'll feed through, and in the process, it will actually give us a little picture oops, of the um, where the, the cardstock is sitting on the cutting mat. So, okay, I've got it up on the screen now, as you can see. Now, it might be tricky for you to see, and it potentially will be, because I've got a kind of little overlay of where the different pieces are that I'm going to be cutting out. Now, it might be tricky for you to actually see, so you'll have to forgive me if I'm kind of moving these around, but when I put the little kind of markers on there, then you should be able to see them. Now, the whiskers need to, to cut out of this black cardstock, so... I need to edit those because I need to rotate them around. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to do the object edit and I'm going to rotate those 90 degrees. And then I'm going to drag them over so as they sit on the black cardstock. Now obviously you can't see the cut line because it's black, 
but you can see the outside box hopefully so um that's laid those down there now since we're looking at the black cardstock we also need the little circles so the smaller of the two circles i can drag those in and i can kind of position them wherever i like in there so i'll put one there and i'll put one there and again tricky for you to see on the screen but i can see they're in the right position um, the bunny head we can see the bunny head is there so i'm going to click on the bunny head and i'm going to bring that in and hopefully I haven't trimmed my card down too tightly. I think I might have done actually. Oh no. Okay. Um, the cardstock's a little bit too narrow for that. Right. So let me go back to let me resize that. So if I resize it by Let's take 10% off. Okay, so that's 10%. I think that will fit on just about. Um, the inner ears, I better alter those by 10% as well. What I should have done was actually eyeball the, um, the cardstock. So I'm going to knock those down by 10% as well for the ears. It might not make a difference, to be fair. Okay, and I'm going to do that with the other inner, other inner ear as well. Okay, I was a bit overzealous when I was cutting the card. So the outer eye, the white cardstock will be used for that. And then we've just got the nose, which is the last piece that we'll cut out of the pink. Okay, so I've got all the components now. So if I'm happy with that, I'm just going to click on OK. Click on OK again. And just keep going until you get back to that screen that we had where you can either add, edit, scan, or go on to the next stage, which is what we're going to do. So now you can see where all the different pieces are positioned. I'm going to select to cut. And then we'll start that off and it will start cutting out all of those pieces. So off it goes. Now, obviously what it's doing here, it's figuring out um, the depth of the card as well. Just keep in mind, some of these are overlapping actually, I didn't notice. So um, you just need to make sure that nothing moves in the process. As I say, sometimes I use like a low tack tape. Our bunny is just about fitting on there now. I was a bit overzealous with cutting it down. It should have been cut to six, six inches wide, which I didn't do. <laughs> But it's on there now, so it should be okay. And again, I'm still checking to see if there's any comments, but for some reason, it's not um, allowing me to get into that bit. All right, so it's cutting the whiskers out now. Okay, so we've got all of our pieces. Obviously at this point you can kind of do your little check to make sure that everything is cut through before you release your mat because of course once you release your mat it will automatically reposition but I'm happy that's cut everything through. So I'm going to click on OK and then get my mat out. And then all you do is kind of give it a bit of a, a wiggle to lift off the pieces. So we've got our, our rabbit. Now you can see what I've done here. I literally have put the wrong size in there completely with regard to that. So, um, what size does it say it needed to be? Uh, one fifty. I've obviously written down the wrong figure on my. Yes, completely wrong. I don't know why I put one fifty on there. One fifty is way too big. It needed to be a um, hundred. So I need to alter that let's just have a quick look whether it was just me yeah two size of a head i put 150 so that needs to be 100 so i'll just make a note of that so as i can alter that so that's why the piece of cardstock was too big because it needed to be 
a hundred mil. Um, not, yeah, hundred mil. Where am I? Yeah, ten centimeters. So, yeah, that's where I did that wrong. <laughs> but not to worry. You kind of get the gist of it. So the other pieces have been cut out. So let me just double check that the other pieces are the right size in comparison with the one that I've made. So the um, the eyes which we've got there. They're the right size, so that's okay. Then the whiskers, which again are on here. So try and keep as least contact with the mat as you can, because obviously the mat is sticky. I have got the little tool that comes with it, which I should be using really. Um, there we go, retrieve that off the mat there. So there you go, so those are your whiskers, and that's where they're all joined together, as I mentioned there, with a little bit in the middle. The nose is there, so that will be the nose. And then you've got the eyeballs, or the pupils, should I say. So they will stick in place like so, when you come to stick those in place. And then the bunny ears will sit on our oversized bunny head. <laughs> so as I say, the sizing was a little bit off to say the least, but, but not to worry. I should have noticed that when I was looking at it, but yeah, so 10 centimeters, I've put 15 on the instructions, hence the big size. So that's created our little bunny. Now, very quickly, because I'm quite conscious of the time, um, I'll show you how to create the box that um, you make in here. So you've got this kind of red box that's been created. So that has done this potentially boxes that you will already have that um, are, are built in. Now, oh, incidentally, if you're coming away from this now, so I've finished with this design, so I can go back to the home page. Now it will automatically delete everything at this stage, but I'm gonna cancel that because if I want to make more of these, then what I need to do is basically save the design. So you go back until you've got the option to save it. And then you can save it either on your scan and cut, you can save it um, via Wi-Fi to the software, which is um, Canvas Workspace, or you can save it to a USB stick. So um, I'm not going to save it on this occasion because I've already saved it um, previously. Um, but uh, yeah, you, I tend to save them to the machine like so. Now at that stage, um, so I'm going to delete everything. So if we were working our way back and we were making these now um, later on, you go into retrieve data and that's where you find out where you've actually saved it. So I've retrieved it here and there you go. You can see my bunny rabbit with the correct size head. So that's what um, I made previously and that's okay. So what I can do then is actually take the different pieces and there you go. You can see we've got the smaller head there. So I would have cut it in a similar sort of way laying it out, scanning in the cardstock, and away you go. So again, um, that's um, that's the way you can work with it. Now I can delete all the patterns on this occasion because it's actually saved it. So it's still saved there. Um, I don't have to worry about uh, that, but we're gonna make the box next. So let's go back to the home page. Now the box is made up in a very traditional way that a box is made with the base and the pieces that come off from the side. So again, we're making this from the basic shapes that we've got on here. So. Um, if we are making the basket or the, the base, you need to select the square, which is this first one here. I'm going to resize that to 85 mil, which of course, if we were looking at 10 mil for our bunny rabbit's head, then that would be not a bad size for it to work with. So obviously everything in proportion there. So um, that's what we're going to be doing with that. And that is one of our sides. Okay, so we're going to click that. Um, we only need one of those at this stage. And that will be one side of the box. So we need to put some little tabs in place because obviously the tabs will stick the box together. So we're gonna add in the tab and the tab shape is again under your basics and it's number 29. And it's, oops, just gone past it. So it is number 29. We need two of those because we need tabs on either side. So we're going to click on that and that's what we've got and we've selected those. So these tabs need to sit and overlap 
these pieces slightly. That one needs to kind of rotate around as well. Oh, I need to resize these. Sorry, I forgot to resize them. Um, so, uh, edit, get rid of that. And then we're going to get rid of that one as well. Um, so, we are going to um, click on OK, add. Let's get another one of those tabs and resize it this time because uh, I forgot to resize it. So it was number, uh, well, my number 29. There it is. Forgot to resize it. So we need it to be 85 um, wide because that's the, the width of the size of our box. So the box size, side, should I say. And then I need it to be, only needs to be about a centimeter high. So obviously everything is altering in proportion at the moment. So because I've got it to the right width now, 85. I need to knock out the proportion because I need it to be just one centimetre high, which is 10 mil, which is okay. So now I've got it the right size. And this is gonna to need to sit on the top and I'm actually gonna need another one of those. I should have um, selected duplicate on this one, but we'll, we'll duplicate it now, which is fine. So now I've got two of those. Now that one needs to be the other way around. So what we can do is we can rotate it 90 degrees, like so. And then I need to line them all up. And then it's all gonna be one piece together in a little while. So we're going to um, line everything up. But to make that active, we need to have more than one item selected. So we're gonna select everything, which we can do because uh, we've got the button there that will allow us to do so. Click on okay. Um, and when we go into object edit, you can see that your alignments are there now. So we can just align everything. Again, let's align them up on the left hand side. So that means that everything is lined up um, and we're going to have to nudge them together to make them into one piece. So what we need to do in order to do that is we need to zoom in. So we've got OK. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit further. And I'm just going to move it across so as I can see where they are. And I'm going to select this piece here. And I'm just going to nudge it. Now you can just about see where it's overlapping with the square, but it only needs to overlap the tiniest of amounts, which it has done, which is fine. And I'm going to come down to the other side of the square piece. And the tab again, I'm just going to overlap that one slightly. That's a little bit further off at the moment, but that's okay because when I click on it, it will select it. And then I'm just going to nudge it with these directional arrows because, of course, these four arrows will allow you to move it around. And again, we're just going to have it overlap just a little bit because it only needs to overlap a little bit in order for us to weld it together. So I'm happy with that. I can go back to the usual size. OK, and now I'm going to select everything again. And we're going to go into edit the object again or object edit and we're going to weld. And this will mean that all of those pieces, again, will weld. Now, at this point, it's a good idea to make sure that you haven't got any kind of odd little lines in there and that they overlapped enough. So I'm happy with that. So that's OK. Um, I'm happy to weld that. And that's OK. And what this will actually do, this will be a piece that will sit along a longer rectangle that we're going to make in just a few moments. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to move that up there out of the way just for the time being. Um, and we need to actually duplicate that. So we'll make um, a second one because we will need another one in a few moments. So I've got two of those ready to go when I need them. Then we're going to um, make the rectangle, which is going to be kind of the, the left hand side, the base and then the top um, of the box. In fact, let me just turn to the. Here we go. Sorry. I'm showing you with my hands and you can't see, I don't think. So it's going to make the base of the box and then the two sides. So the rectangle goes down one side, across the base and back up the other side. So making the rectangle now. So we're going to go back into basic shapes. So, OK, add a shape, pattern. The rectangle is number 22. So it's in the basic shapes, number 22, uh, which is that one. And we're going to have this for the size of this one it needs to be 85 high because obviously that is the figure and also the the width we need to alter so we're going to knock out the proportions so we can alter them so it's 85 high and 
there you go, 85 high. And then the width is um, 255, so it's 25 and a half centimetres. So again, when you're doing it, you can see that you've got a visual changing in the window. You hear those birds outside? Um, and we're only going to need one of those. So we're going to click on set, happy with that, and it brings it into our design. So that's all good. Um, like so. So that's going to be our base. And we're going to have these two tabs, so these two sides are going to sit either side to make that kind of cross shape that will make an open top box. So we've got the the side bit, the base, and the side bit coming from the rectangle, and these two side bits, the front and the back, they're the ones with the tabs on, so they need to be positioned in, which is what we're going to do next. So in order for us to do that, we're going to have to select everything. So we're going to edit, and we're going to select everything to start with, and we need everything to line up, so we need everything to be centralised, those size bits, so that's the first job that we're going to do. So um, object edit. And we're going to go into the alignment again, and it's giving us that because we've got more than one item selected. Um, and we're going to take all those little pluses, so you need the little pluses that are in the middle of all of the shapes, they're all going to line up when we press that centre button. So you can see they all line up beautifully, um, and that's okay. Then what we need to do is overlap those side pieces. So again, we're going to zoom in, so as we can see this, and we can zoom in a little bit further if we're wanting to. Um, and I'm going to move over and move down a little bit so as we can see and you'll be able to see where the side bit overlaps with the main body of the square. In fact let's come out just a little bit so as you can kind of see it. Okay so I am going to take the tab, the tabbed square shall we call it and I'm just going to nudge it down and I can just about see that it has overlapped. It only needs the tiniest amount because otherwise it will knock everything out. And we're just going to go further down because the other half, the other square, we need to nudge up to overlap. And again, it only needs to be the tiniest amount. Use your zoom if you want to get in that little bit further and have a look to make sure that they have overlap, then you can do. Um, in fact, I think I might nudge it just that tiny bit. So it's just two little nudge points that I've done on that one. So again, I'm going to replicate that on the other one. Two little nudge points on that one. I've already done one, so one there. Okay. So now you can kind of see the shape of the box coming together. So we're going to select everything and we're going to edit the object and we're going to weld again. So when we weld it, again, it will give us that warning and it has done and you can see it gives you a preview of what's going to happen and that's exactly what we want. There's no random lines in there of where it hasn't overlapped and welded properly. I'm just going to click on OK and then OK again. So now, I have got my box ready to make up. I haven't got any cardstock out yet, so let me just grab some cardstock and then we will make up a box. Oh, excuse me, should have done that before. Oops, oh, my poor aching bones. Right, I'm back. So, um, I've got my A3 card, not A3, 12 by 12 card. Um, I'm going to put this on my mat. So let me just put that on the mat off the camera again. Sorry, it's just it's a little bit easier. I'm not going to worry too much about scanning this to get it in position because I know there's there's plenty of cardstock there. Um, what I could do if I wanted to, where's my tool, is put that shape up in the top corner there. So as I'm kind of maximising the cut. And then I'm just going to line that in, sorry, line it in, feed it in, should I say. Okay, um, I'm happy with that. I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to select to cut it. And then I'm going to cut. Oops. There we go, and off it goes. So now what it's doing, it's creating the base. The only thing that I haven't done um, which I will explain to you on the camera.
the machine. So let's cut everything out. So let's cut my box. So again, this is a box that I've decided on the shape and the size of it. So it's a useful little exercise, this one, because if you need to make a box to fit something in that you bought as a gift and it didn't come with a box, then this is the way that you, you basically can do it. And then all you would do is, if I place that down there, I haven't got much of a, an area to work on. So you would basically line that up across where the tabs are and then fold those. So you'd put a little bit of glue on each one of these. Obviously, if you're doing it in your cutting mat, you've got a bit more space. If you've got something like a, um, what do they call it? Scoreboard, then you could do that as well. And again, along the edge there, so where you've got the tabs, pulling that up, pulling up the main square, pulling the little tabs up, there we go. And then again, across that edge there. So all the bits that you would usually do to make your box shape. Oops, you've got that there. So side tabs, I would put a bit of glue on. Then those would glue together like so to make your box. I've obviously, I haven't scored it in the right position. And then basically everything comes together to make your little box like so. So again, I'm just going to check the dimensions on this one to make sure I did it the, the right. Yeah, eight and a half. So yeah. So take your side bits, you glue them together. I'm not sure why mine have gone off. Must have resized them somehow. Oops, hold on. Just the way I've scored it. Yeah, those that rectangle box should have been. Three lots of 85. I better double check that dimension. 80, yeah. Hold on. Let's <laughs> get my calculator out. Have I done my maths wrong? I think I might have done. Oh. Right, 85. Oh. oh. Calculator's not working. Hold on. 85 times 3. 255. What did I do it as? Um, box. Two hundred and fifty-five. Oh, okay. Twenty-five and a half. Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Oh no, I did it as two, um, right, I did it as t 225, I put me, yeah, I did the wrong width, so hence the side pieces are too short. I'm getting tired now, I think. <laughs> oh dear me. So yeah, make sure you've got the sizing right. So when I talk, I'll, I'll make sure that the, uh, the, all the details are correct before I post them on the, uh, the, the Facebook Live. So yeah, so hopefully, um, you've got a few kind of lessons under your belt for altering things and resizing. As I say, um, it's more about learning what the different buttons do than you make in a box for your Easter egg. And my daughter-in-law to be has got her eye on this Easter egg, so that's where that will be going. So hopefully you've learned something in the session. There'll be another Make It Monthly next month. We tend to try and make it the first Thursday of the month, which I've no idea where that falls this time. But you obviously, if you subscribe to the newsletter from the craft store, then it will be a case that you'll get notification of that well in advance. So uh, hopefully you've learned a few things. I'm off to check, double check my measurements again. Um, and I think that's where I went wrong with the width of that one. But um, hopefully you will have learned something in the process. So thank you for your company and uh, I will see you.